evening everyone. Uh, a few days ago I was in Gypsy's chat and uh, people were talking about Photos guys and I threatened to do a A to S stream. Sorry, an F to S F to S stream to help people learn how to do Photos. And I'm gonna try and do that tonight. That's what we're gonna be doing. See if I can work out how to change the name of my stream. Edit stream info. profile uh, select some ladder maps so it'll be, be oh, that's not even the right way of doing it it'll be like friendly for a beginner so we'll pick uh, things that have nothing weird going on nemesis got to be vetoed Let's veto the two player ones. And we'll just play the uh, three and four player ones. I don't normally play the uh, uh, Fatty Spirit, but it's F to S, so whatever, it's fine. And I'm going to have to throw like the first 20 games. So uh, look forward to that, I guess. Not enough minerals. 
There should not be any back noise. Okay. So we have a PPP on Silford. If you're trying F to S as a Prodos, then uh, you are going to have a lot of P PVP. Because ladder is mostly P. So I'd, I'll have to take a listen to how the stream sounds afterwards to uh, work out what it is. Because I can't right now. Hopefully it's not too annoying, but if it is, then I don't know. I'll, I'll research it. Maybe my devices are set up uh, poorly because my son has been unplugging and replugging everything. Okay, so we're going for the 48 second pylon. There we go, 47 seconds, not bad. I research after this game. I really should have mined that crystal, I'm so I'm just not paying much attention this uh, game. But we're going to hit our timings. Uh, one thing I like to do is when I'm putting a probe out of the middle line to build a building, I click on the gas. So you saw how I had a probe here and I told it to go to the assimilator. That caused it to drill out of the middle line so it doesn't uh, bounce off other probes, which helps you uh, make sure that you hit your building timings. Because it's very annoying when you try and build a building and uh, the worker you send just keeps bouncing off other workers. Okay, so we have two gateways, we're hitting our timings. We're going to keep building probes. We're going to send out a scout probe on 12. And then 155, we're going to build our first zealot. Let's start a pylon. We're going to be supply blocked a little bit at. Uh, so we're going to stop building probe a little bit at 115, but so, uh, 15 supply at like 204, but it's fine. We get 50 minutes not long after. Okay, so we found our opponent. Let's take a look at what he's up to. Okay, I'm going to pull my probe home and I'm going to send my first zealot across the map. I'm just going to rally zealot to his base at this point. Okay, it's 22. I'm going to build another pylon. And I've got my nexus hotkeyed and I'm just building probes non-stop. So you should try and get the sort of mental muscle memory down where you know how long it takes a probe to build and you just keep building them. And start another zealot. And there's not really anything to do at this point, so I'm just going to watch the zealots go while building probes. Pylon finishes, and we're going to build another zealot. And our first zealot, first zealot is about to show up in his base. So he has a zealot over here. But we're just going to ignore the zealot and go straight to the middle line. Another pylon. So we've got two more zealots showing up. So I'm making sure that I'm focusing one of his with both of mine. Like so. And then just put, I'll put back the one he's attacking. And there we go. Let's see if we can get some probes. Just going to keep sending zealots. Make sure that we have our probes mining in our base. He's only got one probe on gas. Interesting. And that probe wasn't mining at all. Oh. I 
As you can see, my multitasking is not great. But it doesn't actually super matter. Okay, so we're going to hide his out over here at this point. We're going to hide these, and even though we've not really done any damage at all, we're actually completely fine. Because he's just going to keep trying to defend. I'm not playing BWCL this season. I've uh, kind of got tilted by how badly I'm playing. So he's adding a robo. Yeah, my, uh, I've been inactive too long. My play at this point is uh, not something that I'm happy with at all. Okay, he saw that. I'm going to pull that back. Pull these over here. Missing this pylon is not ideal. Yeah, it's actually very not ideal that I couldn't build any uh, Zalots right now. But whatever, it's fine. So I saw that it was a Robo. I need another gateway to make up for that uh, misproduction. But now I've told them to take me off the BWCL team. Uh, it's just it's. I'm just not happy with the way I've been playing because I'm just slow, so sleep deprived all the time. Gonna add a robo, and I'm gonna sell that scout probe. I need to know if he's expanded. Expansion would actually not be a bad play by him here. So my zealot harass was not great. He hasn't expanded, so we're just going to pull back. So at this point, we are basically forced to assume that he's going for some kind of like Viva timing. Let's put this probe out here, and you guys can come back. I've just got my gateways hotkeyed on 1, 2, 3. Just keep them going. I'm going to build a zealot just so I have enough gas to build an uh, observatory in a second when my robo finishes. And I'm going to put some units here just in case of DTs. And this probe here is just going to stay idle. And that's going to be like my building probe. Anytime I want a building built, he'll build it. Just play it kind of casual, kind of easy. Building pylons. So I suspect that he's actually missed a bunch of probes early from his uh, all the harass I was doing, even though I didn't kill that many probes. There's his observer. That's a good catch. Can we just kill that. And at this point, I want to expand because uh, we saw that he had a robo. That observer is really late. The odds that he's not gone Reaver first is pretty low. So it makes sense at this point to assume there's a Reaver. And we'll send the first observer out to confirm. But I don't feel like we can press you here, so we're just going to go expansion. His expansion is likely a little bit faster than mine, but expanding a little bit late in PvP is fine. 
Also, we're going to start placing scouting pylons. Scouting pylons are just pylons you put on li likely drop paths. And I should probably consider having a few of my Dragoons uh, back ready to defend. Notice this Nexus isn't actually flashing. So that means this Nexus is not producing anything, which is not great for him. Oh, a second of, uh, Observer. Nice. Just feeding those things, isn't he? Oh, I missed a production round, but it's okay. No expansion. Interesting. Okay, so at this point, I need to make sure my units are in an arc. He should have expanded by now, though. Also, my probe count is kind of nuts, which is a good thing. You want to be building probes. Like, I di haven't been talking about it because I haven't even known I'd be doing it, but uh, you should just have that muscle memory down. Just every, like, 13 seconds, I think it is, just hit uh, that probe production. Yeah, I don't even think about doing it anymore. It just happens. Okay, we could use some more scouting pylons. We see that he's building a nexus, so he's getting into a defensive posture. That's fine. And what's interesting is that even though the start went absolutely terribly for me, I didn't actually kill anything, I'm still very far ahead. Nothing's happened, and I'm ahead just from building workers. And that's one of the things that is I think, interesting about uh, like showing A to uh, or E to uh, S is that you don't actually need to be you know good at anything. You just build workers. It really is that simple. I have a lot of workers, and so I could just win. So let's see what he has. Just building scouting pylons. So yeah, let's see where we're at. So he's got two Reavers. So as you can see, I won that just by building workers. I just uh, like double his resources. It, the fact that my Zealot Harass did nothing at all doesn't actually matter. I was going to check into the noise thing. Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's like my uh, audio gateway is too high. Okay, testing, testing, testing. Okay, testing.
Yeah, so I know you guys heard me. I was trying to hear myself. I have the audio thing. Yeah, so oh, I shit. know you guys heard me. I was trying to. Shit, it's going to start looping. <laughs> I don't think I could do anything about the like faint noise in the background, so I tried changing it a few times, but it didn't seem to help. Okay. Uh, I just have to take a look at my settings, so. But anyway, that game, PvP, I uh, didn't kill really any workers early on, but it didn't matter just because I built probes non-stop. If you build probes non-stop at F rank, you just, just you win. You have so much more money. Oh, that's what F rank looks like. It's white. Okay. So it's polypied, protest against random. Okay, so we need to start boosting. So we're gonna first we're gonna boost this one. We're gonna go down a little bit, then we're gonna go up to hit the uh, middle patch, and then we're gonna boost this one. So we're gonna go up a little bit and then down to hit the middle patch. So we make sure we're hitting it from the corners. And then we're gonna straighten this one up. This one here, you don't want to be on that crystal. That crystal's not good. So we're just gonna use the crystal at the top, and we're gonna boost with a C. Just like that. So we're going to try and hit our benchmarks. Our benchmarks were 148 for the pylon, 115 for the gateway, 138 for the gateway. And we should be able to easily beat that on right side mining. 148 for the pylon. Oh shit. Well, the thing is, we're not really going to talk strategy at all in this uh, stream. We are literally only going to talk uh, like timings, optimizations, and uh, building probes. Building probes, building pylons, because that is what it's going to look like. This was Fighting Spirit, I think. What I was doing there by telling it to mine this one, then this one, was making sure it approaches that crystal from the correct angle. You don't really want to approach it from there because that kind of mine's wonky. You want to approach it from the angle that I've got. And that way on the second trip it will do the boost. You kind of always want to be approaching them from like inside the, uh, the in, in the corner where the two minerals meet. That's the spot. We're just going to send this probe that comes out on 8 to build the pylon because the uh, ramp is a long way away on this map. So that's a 47 pylon. That's good. We'll move this probe off that crystal and then send that probe to it. There we go. Then on this probe, when it comes back to mine, we're going to move it across and then hit C for return cargo. And these things really will make like a two or three second difference in your uh, gateway timings. And that matters. If a zealot arrives two or three seconds early, that is a huge deal early game. Okay, so we build a gateway, we hit our 115. And given how far away from the ramp this is, 115 on this map is actually pretty good. We're still boosting that one there. And then let's rally our gateway over here for the next probe coming back, just our next probe coming out, because we're going to build the gateway on 12. And we'll hotkey this probe, it can be our scout probe. Okay, 140, but I mean the gateway's at the ramp. It's not ideal, but Fighting Spirit's not a great map. It's just It's not an efficient mining uh, base. Build our Zealot. We're going to build a pylon on 16. Again, just send the probe up to the gas if you want to get it out of the middle line. Uh, 
And our scout probe shows up. Nothing here. Let's go to the next base. Now he's probably going to do a wall in because this is a PVT on fighting spirit. But we're going to do the exact same opener as we would do any other time because why not? We're just going to learn the one opener. That's all we're going to need. Two more zealots building. And let's build a pylon. Rally my gateways in the middle of the map, just so my zealots definitely go somewhere. Uh, I'll redirect them once I know where he is, but I want them just to be heading somewhere at the start. Okay, so he's top. So let's send them over there. And let's take our gas, because it's going to be a PVT. So free zealots gas. Ooh, there's no wall. Interesting. Okay. Let's wait for our backup to arrive. I don't really need to make a big deal out of the first zealot. I can use uh, all of them. I started those two zealots at the same time, and yet they're at very different points. I'm assuming they both ran into the ramp, and then one of them bounced off the other. Okay. One thing you do when you build the uh, gas is you use the G command, the gather, on your uh, uh, probes when you send them there, and that stops the bug, for the bug where they just don't mine any resources if you click on it. Ooh, that's a lot of workers. Okay, so we're not actually going to worry about that. That's actually fine. He can pull all his workers if he wants. Because him pulling the workers is the value that we're after. Okay, he's been mining gas for quite a long time there, and he didn't really want to be, so that's good for us. Like, all that gas mined is not really any use to him. We've started two Dragoons, we're just going to build two, uh... And we're going to start... just going to get our range. And let's get another pylon. You can... any time you have money and you don't really know what to build, it's always fine to build a pylon. Just move commanding beyond where we want to attack, and then... This is fine. Just keep building workers. Oh, there's an SCV in my base. Let's see if I can drag it into the middle line. So I dragged the, the SCV into the middle line, then I attacked with all the probes, so it died. Okay, it looks like he wants to attack. I'm just going to go to my ramp. Because I don't have range yet, so the ramp's fine for now. And I'm going to start my Robo. Constant probe production. I mean, there's nothing you can do here. I have a ramp, I have Dragoons. It's, he's got zero hope. And he's going to be down like 15 workers, because I just haven't stopped building workers. And most of this game at this MRI is just you build workers. That's it. That's the whole game. Oh, I had a mine. But I'm not really worried. So keep building units. Once my observers are done, I'm going to just push out and kill them. Dragoon range is done. So there's nothing you can do to me at this point. Put another pylon. Just always good to have pylons. One thing I haven't d talked about this game is my SimCity, even though it's a PVT, and that is a mistake. I should have been talking about that. So Vulture run buys and Vulture drops are a big part of this matchup, and uh, one of the things you need to be doing against that is building a base that doesn't sub allow good Vulture movement around it. So I've got that pylon there for like drop detection, and then I've got a... Uh, Observatory up here for blocking there. I should probably have a building like here as well. I don't, but I probably should. Building some zealots because I don't have the gas for a uh, observer. If I don't build the zealots, 
The thing is, once we check the replay, he's going to be at like 40 supply at this timing, and I'm at uh, 60. I've got so many units that when the time comes, I can just walk across the map. And it's just because of the workers. You just keep building workers. That's the game. All three gateways are hotkeyed, so I can just build off of them pretty efficiently. Oh. That's annoying. Oh, there's a bunker there. I did not expect that. It just doesn't really matter. I just have more money. There's literally nothing you can do. Because I haven't missed the probes is the thing. All you have to do is not miss the probes. And then we just attack move. You build probes, you win games. That is how you win it. F. Yeah, because I've got more money. What can he do? I just have that much more money than him. Let's do a location hotkey on my gateways. about the time the next is going to be done. Okay, oh. now we're going to build a shuttle because there are tanks on the high ground and it's just easier to deal with tanks on the high ground with a shuttle. So I'm going to press C on that those probes that will help them split themselves. And I need some, something to put in the shuttle so I'm going to build some zealots. Three probes on the gas. I thought I'd valued that gateway. Oh well. Okay, I've got four zealots building. Oh. And again, just a lot more money than he has. A lot, lot more money than he has. That's just because of the workers. So you have to do. Okay, let's go time. You go over here, we can start an expansion. And I'm still building them. I've got 100 supply and I'm still building them. Oh, there's a, uh, one of those over there. Do, 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 do. Drop someone there. I'm not going to drop all of them though, because he will uh, attack, with, attack them with vultures. So you just drop a few at a time. So, so. It's attack move. I'm not actually using my F key to uh, do anything, but it's fine. It's just I have more stuff. I just have more stuff. Because of the workers. I mean, look look at it. How could you lose like that? You've got so much more money. It doesn't actually matter what build you do, as long as you build probes. It just doesn't matter. And that's going to be the lesson. 
and it's we're gonna have the same lesson every game for like an hour but it's just gonna be you build probes I have my nexus on 5 and 6 and I just go 5t60 and that's all I do Okay, we got a PVZ on Polypoid. We're going to go two gate. Not the greatest split I've ever done, if I'm honest. That probe, straightening that one up and getting it on that crystal is going to be the priority. The other probes are kind of okay, but that one there is. You can't leave it on that crystal. That crystal's terrible. This one here doesn't seem to be mining super efficiently either, so I'm going to change the angle on that one. I'm just going to send it down a little bit, then up, like that. Make sure it's definitely approaching it from the corner. Pardon me, I'm just sitting here burping into the microphone. One forty eight on the first pylon, so we are hitting our benchmarks. We got that probe hotkeyed. I like four for that one. I don't know why, it's just four feels like the right uh, hotkey for that probe. Also, if you're building gateways at the ramp, you can just use the probe that comes out at ten. It's not like the optimal probe, but it also it, it's gonna be fine. You don't need to do anything optimal. You can just do things that are easy. So rather than like putting a probe on the middle line and taking one off the middle line, you can just grab a probe or have a designated probe. So I just rallied the Nexus so that the probe that came out at uh, 10 would be the one I used for the gateway. And we're going to do the same for 12. It lines up quite nicely, so there's no real reason not to. That's our boost, and that's our 138 timing. We've got our gateway talk to the ramp, we've got our scout probe on 3. We're going to build a zealot on 13. Going to boost the probe, and it's time for a pylon roughly at like 158. Uh, it wasn't ideal, it's fine. Then probe again. So on the right side mining I like to do 15 pylon, on the left side mining 16 is what I prefer. Because you don't really have a break in probe production if you go uh, 15 pile on, on the right hand side because the right hand side mining is just so good. And the faster pylon does make a difference. Okay, let's build another pylon. Oh, there's some links on the map. Okay, I'll see what he's up to. So he's blocking his ramp. And a third hatchery over there, interesting. And again, we're just building probes, building zealots. Make sure they don't get stuck on the ramp. I'm actually going to move command them. And I'm going to start a gas, because I've got spare money. And then another zealot. And then another zealot. Main thing is to keep the zealot on pro production non-stop, which means pylons. 
Okay, and let's go. Having the probe mixed in here is kind of useful. Because the probe gives you a little bit more DPS. Okay. Let's make sure my zealots are like flattened that line slightly. So having a nice flat line on your zealots helps a lot with their uh, surface area against these zerglings. Don't know where you're going over there. And let's keep going. So again, we're just going to focus on keeping a flat line. And that probe on the back line really is helping quite a lot. You'll notice he doesn't have any workers. That's pretty good for us. That there are no workers. Oh, we're on a ramp. Nice. Let's go behind his middle line. Yeah, so there aren't any workers. You just want to find somewhere that like they can't really surround you. Middle line is as good as any other place. But if you look at his work account, he's not really mining. And we are. So at this point, I'm going to pull my zealots back. The damage is actually already done. Just kill a drone and pull back. He just built too many links at this point. Actually, you know what? I'll kill that one there first. Because the one inside my base can't really get away. And he really does not have the economy to replace those. He's on like 20 supply right now and it's all uh, uh, Zerglings. Whereas I have more money than I can spend. Oh shit, I've got bad rally. If that Zerglings gets into a bad position, just run it behind a wall. It'll be fine. So that bad valley's not been helping me very much. And out we go. But the thing, it's just I have so much more money. I have a ridiculous amount more money than him in this game. He's got like 10 workers, I've got like 40. It's unfair how much more money I have, but I just didn't stop building probes. And that's the game. Okay, he's going for a Lingor then. Let's make sure that my Zalots are pretty flat. Build some... Buildings up front as well, just because. I think that I can sustain all of this production. Not even difficult.
Look at the resources. It's exactly the same story every single game. You just look at the resources. I have twice their money, all of these games. 27 workers to 10. 31 workers to 8. 38 workers to 8. And you don't actually need to play Brood War to learn that. You can learn that against an AI, or you can learn that in an empty game. Just make a single player game. And just uh, Pat is going 5T, 6T every 13 seconds. Well, what I did when I first learned to do it was I made myself an audio track, and it just said build probes every f like 12 seconds. And I played with that on a loop in the background. So I would like play for like this is about when I'm playing quite a lot, so I play for like four hours, five hours, and for all 300 minutes of me playing, every 12 seconds, so 1,500 times this loop went around telling me to build probes. It just doesn't stop. And, you know, I lost my mind a little bit during those days, and uh, I still hear the build probes every 12 seconds. I can never stop hearing it. But I can build probes. We're going to go for that crystal. That crystal feels like one that can boost. It's a PvP. So if you watch that probe returning to this crystal on the second trip, we should see a boost. Like so. It goes up and it loops around without decelerating. The left side boost aren't as good, but they're not nothing. I will use that probe for this. 47 on the pylon, because I sent the probe early, because I wanted the gateway to the ramp. Didn't like that angle on this crystal. It went up like kind of here ish. Didn't go to the corner. And 114 gateway. 114 gateway with left side mining too. That's pretty good. But it proves you don't actually need the right side boost to hit a 114. The 114 you can get just with a uh, like decent uh, split. Okay, we're just going to send the 12th probe over here build the uh, gateway on 139. Yeah, I could have built it up here on like 138, so the probe was a little bit late, but it's fine. I'm going to hotkey them on 1 and 2, just because that's uh, nice and easy for me. And let's value them to the map. That was probably a bit early on the pylon. 16 pylon is what the pros seem to do. 15 pylon is, I like it a little bit more on the right side mining. I don't, I, that was a mistake. Left side mining, go for the 16 pylon. Build the probe first, honestly. Okay, so we're probably looking at a cross map here, given his uh, probe timing. Cross map's not as good for Zealot Rush, but we're still going to do the Zealot Rush. I'm also going to send the first Zealot down there just to make sure he's not there. Because that Zealot will have time to do that. That's fine. I'm going to build my, my next pylon next to these gateways. Because it's always nice to have two pylons on the same gateways. Interesting. So we found some foxies. Are you going to pull them back? If you build a pile on there, it'll make sure that mines efficiently. Well, that's a little ambitious. Given it's a two gate. But okay, I mean, sure. I'll have the injured zealot uh, attack the pylon, where the he healthy ones can stay up here and do this.
And he's gonna leave. Uh, yeah, I'll probably put this on YouTube. That's the plan. Okay, so we've made it to D. That's one of the advantages of 2Get as well, is that 2Get is basically safe against everything. So, uh... You... If you're worried about cheese or whatever, you can just go 2Get and you'll be fine. That's why the only build we're going to be doing tonight, every matchup, is a 2Get. I hate this base site. I am not good at splitting up and right. Shoot. I'm not good at any of that. That was all bad. I was trying too hard to boost. Ah, fuck that crystal. I'm just... I cannot seem to mind straight on that crystal. Yeah, the only builds I'm doing uh, Student Hydra, Hydra uh, a 10 gate, 12 gate. It is a very easy build to do, and I'm focusing on uh, things that are within our control. So things like uh, making sure that you hit your timings on your first few buildings, making sure that you build your pylon, make sure you keep your pro production up. We're not actually going to talk about what the other guy's doing at all. It's just going to be purely things that you can focus on in single player to make sure that uh, you're you're managing your own base the way you should be. So going to gate PVZ on Silford is not a good idea because uh, so one base build PVZ don't really work on flat maps. They're not easy. Whatever. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So our split was okay, but these probes need to basically all be straightened up. So I straighten this one up first, and I just send it up to that crystal. Then I uh, move it back down. To straighten it. And then I have to straighten up this one. So what I'll probably do is put this one on that crystal and then... Oh, yeah, like that. It wasn't, that wasn't very cleanly done, I'm sorry. So this top probe, I'm going to hotkey it on 4 and I'm going to press C as it returns cargo to straighten it up so that it goes to the corner of the Nexus rather than going down here. Because it wants to go like that direction, which is not good. See, I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. I didn't have a probe in position to build the gateway on time either, so the pylon on time either, which is why I just used a, uh, a probe on my mineral line and built the pylon there. It's more important to get the pylon built than it is to get the pylon built where you want it to be. And yeah, 10 12 all matchups. So 114 gateway. 114 is pretty good. And then we're going for 138 on the second gateway. 138 is our get benchmark on that. Not 137. There we go. Going to hotkey that probe. And we're just going to focus on our mineral uh, boosting for now. Let's rally these gateways to the choke. Build up Zella and Pylon. We're doing a 15 pylon. We have the right side mining, so it, you don't really lose any pro production if you have right side mining. And you go for a 15 pylon. So, uh, hitting C on return cargo helps a probe on this crystal specifically, in every map that has this layout. Because the probe by default tries to go back to the, the Nexus the stupid way. The probe tries to go back to, the, to this part of the Nexus. If you hit C, it, it will make it go back to the top corner of the Nexus, which is where you want it to go back to. And it is something you have to keep doing, but on the other hand, it, what else are you going to do early game? And you can just hotkey it. I have it on 4, so I just go 4C every time it's going to come back. See? 4C. You don't even need to watch. If you know when it's going to come back, you can just do it blind. Okay, we've got 3 zealots. We're going to send them. 
The main thing though is we're going to keep building probes. Let's rally our gateways. Okay, he's building six links. That's fine. It's be a little bit annoying with our probe, but you don't have to do this. It's just me being annoying. But like, nothing's going to go wrong if you don't harass for your probe. Okay, so we're about to have our first battle with these zealots against the uh, zerglings. And it's going to depend on how good my angle is. So I need to make sure that we're in a straight line. Oh shit, I didn't realize that was a sunken. I thought that was still a creep colony. Okay, so we're just going to run these ones through. We're going to see if we can get a drone. But he's already used a drone to build the... Uh, We already used a drone to build the uh, sunk economy, so we've actually already effectively killed a drone. So we're happy with that. Killed a second drone there, and we forced a lot of links. And the beauty of this situation here is that actually we're doing fine just by building the zealots. Because he has to keep building links. Every time he builds links, he's not building drones. Whereas we can build zealots and probes at the same time. If you look at how many workers I have, this is roughly one shit ton. And I can just keep building him. I don't have to stop. And while I'm doing this, I'm still developing my tech. I could have expanded too, but I'm not going to expand. I'm just going to build uh, uh, zealots. But I'm, yeah, I'm also mining gas. I'm uh, going to build a cybernetical one day. I'm building probes. I haven't stopped building probes this entire time. So now we have nine zealots. Let's see what happens. Make sure we have a nice flat line. Oh, okay. So we look at his base. He is still building links. What that tells us is that he's not building drones. And so our harass is working. We are killing a lot of his zerglings right now. So killing a lot of his drones right now. It doesn't look like we're killing a lot of his drones, but believe me, we are. He's not building hatcheries. He's not building any of the shit he wants to be building. Because he's building zerglings and sunken colonies. Okay, you're going to try a run by? That's fine. Dude, did So if you look at his drone count, it's he, like a ZVZ level of drone count. Let's start plus one air just because. Let's, see, let's get range. And I just have so much money in this game. As I said, it is silly the amount of money I have. And he doesn't. I can go two gateway production, I can build a Stargate. I can go uh, forging, I can build cannons. Just look at the money. It's just... <laughs> it's just workers. Uh, I'll link you to my YouTube page now. Not that there's really anything on there, but... Uh, hold on, let's go to the U-tubs. And my channel. There we go. I think that should work. I have 21 subscribers. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, you build probes. That is how you win at these MORs. I have an about section. I was actually going to knock out the whole thing tonight, I thought. 
I might just you know, do F to S in one uh, sitting. I don't know how hard it is to get to S though. We'll see. But yeah, just build probes. That is uh, how you play this game. Because he spent all that time building Sunkins, all that time building uh, Zerglings. What he wasn't doing is building drones. And so you just have more money. Just uh, build probes. I know it's a cliche. I know that if you like go onto our boudoir and say, hey, I'm F rank, what do I do to improve? People will say, just build workers. And you'll be like, you haven't even seen my replays. You don't know what I'm doing wrong. If you're F rank, you need to build workers. It's a cliche for a reason. Oh, that wasn't ideal. So what I'm doing at the moment is uh, something you can practice in single player. You don't actually need opponents. This is just hitting the timings, making sure that you, your fingers are doing the 5T, 6T, or wh whatever it is you have your hockey set up every like, 12, 13 seconds, so you don't miss the worker production. Making sure you hit your pylon timings. If you can't do it in single player, you can't do it in a game. On that crystal there, you boost by doing a move command over to like this area and then uh, doing a C as it gets halfway there. Like that. One fifteen. One fifteen is uh, about what you should be doing on a map that doesn't have good boosting so, or good mining. So Fighting Spirit is an old, old map that does not have good mining. I normally have it banned because there's a bunch of issues with Fighting Spirit in terms of map design. But if I'm doing an F to S series, I need to play the same maps that people are going to play. So, Fighting Spirit it is. Two gateways, 138, 139 is the second gateway timing, that's what we're after. And yeah, if you can't do those timings in single player, then just keep passing single player till you can. I'm going to queue up another probe now, because why not? And let's turn the probe over there to build a pylon. Okay, so it's pylon on like 205 for the second pylon. Rally the gateway to the ramp. Let's see what the scout probe's up to. Looks like he's not over here. Queue up another zealot. Yeah, first gate 115. If you get right side spawn on like Eclipse, you can do a 113. 113 is like pro gamer level though. So 115 is fine. If you're doing like 117, 118, you need to go to single player and practice it. Because that's something that, that means you're just doing something wrong early game that is something that you can just fix with a little bit of practice. Okay, so it looks like it's cross map. Let's send all the zealots. I'm going to take my gas because it's a PVT. So I'm not going to build another two zealots at this timing because th there's just no real point in the PVT. Now I didn't actually need to build that third pi or this third pylon uh, at this point because I'm not supply blocked, but so I could have gone core then pylon, but whatever, it's fine. I'm not trying to make the build too technical. It's just going to be build some zealots and take it from there. Main thing right now is to make sure we start our, ga our gas mining when the assimilator finishes. So, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to watch the assimilator because there's nothing else going on. And we're going to use the G command for gather to send the probe to the assimilator to make sure that we definitely start mining it. Because right clicking the assimilator doesn't always work. It should, but it doesn't. The G command works better. Interesting. I was expecting an SCV on the map. He built a bunker. Okay. Let's have you go up here. These adults are going to die, so I'm not too worried about them. I 
And the thing is, we're already pretty far ahead on uh, economy right now. So, let's make sure there's no proxy going on. Because we saw the SCV early, but we don't know where it went. So, I'm just going to build a Nexus. He's very defensive right now. He's uh, It's cross-map, so I feel like a Nexus is to play here. Uh, we're going to send up the scout probe to see what's going on. And we're going to start our range. But we're going to be fine with four Dragoons just back here on our side of the map. Yeah, so PVT uh, is a tricky matchup uh, for reasons that I will explain at some point. But uh, it's not actually... The, the ways that it's tricky are not going to be relevant in any of this because we are just going to be building this with... winning these with uh, workers. What we're doing right now is not proper PVT. It is just building probes. Okay, so we've got three vultures. I'm building a zealot because I don't have the gas to go robo and uh, dragoon at the same time. But we just haven't stopped building workers. So if we were to just jump out of this game and check the replay at this point, we would find that we have considerably more workers than he has. And that is how we're going to win these games. Just building the workers. Building workers, building pylons. The, the, just the worker production just isn't stopping. And I have that one hotkeyed on six. I thought we were up uh, observatory. Oh well. And now we're just going to build a bunch of gateways. But worker production does not stop. That is how you play this game. Build, build, build a pylon. That's out of green range. I mean, S rank with just worker spam. It is really that simple. As I said, it's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. Okay, so we're going to clear our third, we're just going to take our third. So send observer, send a few dragoons, send a probe. Oh. Maybe we don't send the probe quite so early. Okay, just going to run away, it's fine. We can send a probe. And even while I'm doing this, it's still 5T60. The probes never stop. Put these near the ramp, so they... Stop him getting up. Not entirely sure why he did that. Let's put some dragons over there. So let's put some uh, buildings over there. And the worker production just does not stop. Got some pylons there to obviously block that base off. No, 
another up there. So yeah, we're not going to worry about what he's doing. So what times used to expand? In this case, I expanded because it was cross map, and he didn't seem like he was being particularly aggro. But there's no real. That that's that's the question that I can't answer in the middle of a game, with a universally applicable answer. I'm sorry. It's just it's. It's a complicated question with a complicated answer that deserves better than the attention I can give it right now. I'm going to block that base off. And you know what? I might actually stop building uh, uh, probes right now. I think I've got enough probes. Can build some gateways. If we wanted, we could go carriers, but I'm not going to be too technical this game. Another forge. Put some cannons for the drop. I forgot to send those. Add some cannons as well, just because. Add another one of those. Okay, so it's 12.30 and we are maxed out. So we're going to go now. This is enough. We're going to move command the Dragoons in a little bit to get them on top of things. But you see, I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? I've just got all these bases. And I've got all these workers. That's fine. You c I, I want you to be asking questions. They're just sometimes they're difficult to answer. The question, when do you expand PVT, is... Uh, not a question that's super, super easy to answer in the middle of a game. So that game I expanded because I felt like he was in a very defensive posture. He built a bunker early. He was building vultures, uh, which implied that he was playing for like map control, which is like an expansion kind of style, not a pressure kind of style. Uh, and it was cross map and... I'd already been in his base for quite a while with my first few zealots, and there wasn't a second factory. So I looked at that position and I thought, okay, I can go uh, like four dragoons with no range, build a nexus, then go back for the range, and I still have enough dragoons to hold off any kind of pressure. Not, 
But it's difficult to really define why it is I felt that that was okay uh, during the game. It just I took an expansion because I could take an expansion, which is not really helpful for a educational stream, and I understand that, and I apologize for it. Yeah, because I uh, built probes. You build workers, and then you win. And it was a narrow bridge on Fighting Spirit, and he had tanks set up to like shell me as I co tried to cross the bridge. And it just didn't matter. Oh, is this Vermeer? Shit, it's Vermeer. I thought it was Polypod. I thought my ramp was over there. It's hockey that probe was for. That's the boosting probe. I just use this probe for gateways. Fuck it. And we can boost remotely. Uh, so the return cargo button changes color if it's time for to boost. Goes to uh, the return cargo button appears if it's time to boost. Shit, I'm giving bad information. Gonna send the probe to the gas. You send the probe to the gas to make sure that it doesn't get caught on the other probes. So if you have a probe you want to build something with and it's on the mineral line, you just click right click on your gas and it will drill it out so you don't get blocked. Make sure you hit your buildings on time. Because again, early game you've got to be hitting these building timings. So we're going to go for a, I guess 116 gateway or pylon because I forgot to not build that probe. There's our pylon. Yeah, we are legit doing F2S. No Zerg there. Keep building probes. Do the boost. Okay, so he's most likely cross map because uh, you wouldn't really want to... The Overlord should have gone this way because the Overlord always goes towards the close natural. Oh, he's going to take the gas. Okay, I'll have to go kill that. Attacking it could let him up my ramp, but I'm not super worried about it. Oh, this is Fighting Spirit. I thought this was Vermeer. I'm not really paying attention at all. Okay, so now we see there's no natural. We know that it is a uh, rush of some shade. And so we're just going to make sure we hold the ramp. The gas isn't as important. Okay, he's got a, he's got his own gas, so this is a 9 full speed. So we've actually already done a lot of harass. It doesn't look like we've done a lot of harass, but we have. Because he hasn't built any drones. You know how earlier in the game I had that probe that was hotkeyed onto uh, 4? As I lost my first scout probe because I was playing sloppy, I sent it to his middle line. Oh, no, it immediately dies. Okay, never mind. So, in PvZ, if you have a second probe hotkeyed, one thing that is useful to do is... Uh, Uh, is send it to the middle line so that it drills uh, to their base. Also, we can wait on this situation because this we're not in a hurry here. We scouted that he was on one hatchery. We can build probes and we can build uh, pylons and we can build pro uh, zealots all at the same time. He can't do that. He only has the one hatchery. Every time he builds links, he is not building workers. So we are getting further and further ahead. He's getting further and further behind. We are not worried. The only way we can actually lose this right now is if we go out and lose all our zealots. So we're just going to sit up our ramp doing nothing. That is going to be our build. Just build probes, build pylons, build zealots. And if you're watching the stream and you're thinking it can't be that easy, you are understanding it. It is that easy. Okay, so 
when we send out our zealots, we're going to want to make sure that we have our ramp uh, held by some more zealots. We're going to want to make sure our zealots go in a big uh, cluster. Let's hot kill these. It's 11 zealots. Send them out. And then put these ones on the ramp. I'm going to add a cannon up here as well. Because what he's most likely to do at this point is play for some kind of counterattack. So I really should be convoying these reinforcements. I should be sending them one at a time, but whatever. Make sure the ramp is walled. Hope stands behind them. Okay, let's make sure we're attacking a nice uh, line to get... Uh, okay. Interesting. So, he only had the uh, the one hatchery in his main, right? And then he took his natural, but he's built a lot of sunkens. His drone count this game is he doesn't have one. That's his drone count. His drone count is non-existent. Oh, shoot. I'm going to lose those up. Oh well, that's a bit sloppy. Start our plus one. We've got a lot of zealots. Plus one's nice with zealots. But we are still exactly where we want to be this game. We are feeling good about this situation. You look at that and you think, how many drones do you have, buddy? We're not worried about the lings, so we're not going to build a cannon that are natural. We're going to take a second gas. We're kind of behind on our gas count, so With having two gases early on is going to be nice. And we have the probes for it, is the other thing. We have a lot of probes this game. I just sent 12. I'm going to send some more. We're going to immediately saturate the second base. Start a plus one air as well. So I'm, at this point, I'm playing. Into, I'm thinking about my loss conditions. So uh, uh, let's, let me talk about loss conditions a little. You work out what the state of the game is. You work out how it's going to go, and you work out what could go wrong. So what could go wrong at this point is uh, some kind of weird lurker all in, or his mutilus take control over my uh, stargate. So right now, I am playing to secure my stargate. Okay. So I'm securing my Stargate. Oh shit, I wasn't building uh, another Corsair. Uh, he should be expanding behind this, so I'm going to deny any expansion behind this. Because that is what he ought to be doing. See, so yeah, I'm just sending all my Zealots over there to uh, that base at 12 o'clock. Shield batteries are pretty good. Shoot. Those zealots are not the smartest zealots there ever was. The other thing is I'm kind of gas starved, so I, if I use a, if I use shield batteries for my uh, uh, Corsairs, it helps with the gas starve issue. Why am I running that into the... Uh so 
So he's not expanding behind this, so I'm actually still completely fine. Like, eventually my Corsairs will hit a critical a mass. There's my plus one air. Oh, yeah, that was my plus one huh? My Zealots are just out of the map making sure that he's not doing anything funky. Five plus one Corsairs, that would do nicely. I'm not even grouping him. I should be. Notice I didn't spend too much time cannoning my natural. I wasn't too worried about cannoning the natural. Because the natural is uh, not where the Stargate was. And I, as I said out loud, the, the issue wa the plan was save the Stargate. The Stargate was what I couldn't lose. We know we didn't expand behind that. Oh, he's got Bow. That's fun. I always think Bow is a uh, really funny spell to, for people to use. Oh, you were meant to be over there. What he should have done. Wow, that dragoon is not helping at all. I just have too much money. Like, way too much money. Oh, that's all his own lots. Building uh, uh, probes, even though I shouldn't be. It's kind of funny. But I actually just cannot actually stop myself building probes.
I enjoyed his uh, barrow play. That, that was funky. I like that a lot. Okay, he's got Lurkers. That's fun. More money. Just a lot more money. Build some gateways. Why am I still building probes? I just, I literally cannot stop building probes. It's become a problem. I don't know how to stop. This is genuinely <laughs> the cause of the issues in my games. Now the challenge is to spend all this money. I can only do my best. So I played too defensive in that early game. I missed the timing I was after, but it's fine. Because it's just, it's, uh, I had the money. I could afford to be uh, defensive. Put myself in a bit of a uh, silly situation with the muter, but I mean, it's again, it's fine. I had two cannons and a stargate in my main in one place, so eventually I was going to be able to recover with uh, plus one corsairs. As long as I didn't hemorrhage uh, corsairs by taking the fights early, and the shield battery helped a lot there. Okay, PvP. Yeah, but two shield batteries, didn't I? Okay, so we're just going to head f for our normal timings. Uh, what map is this? Was this Polypoid or Fighting Spirit? We're going to go for a 48 second pylon, 115 gate, 1... Uh, 38 gate. If it's bottom left on Polypoid, bottom left on Polypoid is not a good base site. It mines very inefficiently. And I think it is. So it's going to be tricky to hit our timings here. Also, the Zealots always spawn at the base of the gateway, which is frustrating on this map because it means your rush timings are a little bit longer. Yeah, it's polypoid. Not 
We're going to boost that probe. It's not a good boost. You just move command over there and then hit C. But it's not a great boost. The probe naturally wants to go like the worst possible route to the Nexus. It's really annoying. Yeah, 115 on the gateway. It's not great, but bottom left on polypoid sucks. Hitting 115 on bottom left on polypoid is like hitting a 113 on Eclipse. Uh, like five Corsairs with plus one is the magic number to kill uh, Scourge. But I was just kind of like harassing back and forth with shield batteries because I didn't want him to have too much freedom. I'm going to go for a 16 pylon. Some people like to build pylons like here and here in this uh, matchup, but you don't want to on po uh, poly on PvP, I think. It's good in PvT, but PvP, it helps them if they go for mana pylon, if you already have some pylons blocking the uh, flow. So I think it's bad in PvP. Because if they then do a mana pylon, then your probes start going like down and across. And it's just it's kind of ugly. Not a fan of it. I probably could have done a 22 pad on, not a 23 pad on there, but it's fine. Interesting. Okay, it's too late for me to go. Uh, so he's gone uh, fast expand. It is too late for me to go for a gas at this point, so I have to go Nexus. I cancelled the Zell at the moment I saw it, because I had to. Yeah, I have to go Nexus at this point. And then gas. He really should steal my gas, but he's not going to. The other thing is I didn't actually confirm the Nexus. So it doesn't a he doesn't have to have a Nexus behind this. There could be that bunch of proxy gates somewhere. So I'm sending out my probe to look for that. Because at this MMR, anything can happen. Also, I'm going to build a. Now I'm going to build the pad on there because I want to stop his uh, pro from doing circuits at the middle line. I'm going to resume building zealots because, again, anything could happen. He could have like four gateways hidden somewhere. That probe is going to get me vision of the middle line. Cancel that for Dragoon. I had I got vision of the middle line so that I could drill my probes to middle line. Also, if you press C as the probes arrive, any probes holding a mineral will then go uh, return the middle to that nexus, and then they will split themselves. So you can uh, very effectively split your probes onto the middle lines with just a single uh, click. Uh, he's gonna lose that. I never confirmed what he was doing. He could be going like super fast DT, no Nexus. It's not impossible, so that's why I went for Ganon. I also need to be placing some scouting pylons at this point. And I think he went for a Nexus, but I mean, <laughs> you can never know. Uh, let's have these guys stand all around the cannon too. 
we're just again we're thinking in terms of loss conditions. We're thinking, okay, let's say I lose this game. What was it that happened? What went wrong? DT ran by my cannon, got into my base. That would be one thing that could go wrong. Another thing that went wrong would be DT arrived right before my cannon finished. Another thing would be like a DT drop killed my Robo. So I'm going to build my Robo next to the cannon. I have one cannon. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose my Robo before the observers are out. So yeah, DT, oh, sorry, Robo builds next to the cannon. And just thinking about loss conditions. Thinking, okay, what went wrong? Doing the what went wrong analysis of the game before you actually lost the game. The main thing this game though is that my pro production has been non-stop. And that is always what you need to be doing. Every game. Non-stop. So it looked like he's moving out. So we're just going to spam some units. But we're still building probes. We're not like going, uh, we're not really cutting for this. We're just playing safe. That's fine, we can wait. Hmm, you can see up there, can you? I think he skipped Robo. I think that's how he has more stuff than me. But my economy is slightly better than his. Because again, I've been building probes. And players at this MMR do not know how to build probes. Uh, supply block's not ideal. Okay. Let's make sure the Dragoons are getting in on the action. There's a number over the middle line of StarCraft 2. Oh shit. Uh, it, the saturated is not really a thing. You, Because you build probes for the next Nexus. He went straight into plus one. That's his first thing. So he he cut on forty and just went all in, with them up at considerably more. He could, if he actually went on time, he probably could have uh, done more than he did there, especially given he cut uh, detection. So uh, yeah, you build probes for the next nexus. So in like PVZ, where you're going for an eight gate all in, for example, you stick you stick on like forty four probes. You don't go more than forty four probes, not because that's like peak saturation, but because you're just going to mine out your two bases, then take another two. Whereas PVT, you go up to like 70 probes and you overbuild probes on your bases because you want to have extra probes so that you can immediately uh, saturate every new base that you take. But no, just keep building probes. 
Don't stop. Was it plus one armor he got? I thought it was attack, but I didn't actually check. Yeah, so, I mean, there are... There are timings that involve probe cuts at specific times, but basically, if you're just playing a standard macro game, you will always be expanding, which means that you always want to up your probe count to take the next base. Up to, like, 70. Okay, it's a PVT. And we're going to do the exact same opening we're going to do every other game in this stream. Forty-eight second pylon, one hundred fifteen gateway, one hundred thirty-nine gateway. Maybe. When I send my probe back to the middle line after building something, I try and make sure it goes to a, a, a crystal that's going to be clear by the time it gets there. I try and rotate them if I can, like what I'm doing here. And that one goes there. 140. 140 is not ideal. And my placement wasn't great though either. Uh, f you attack upgrade. If you're starting out, get get attack upgrades. Attack upgrades sc uh, scale the best because uh, armor reduces the incoming damage by one. But if the incoming damage is like 50 from a siege tank, it goes down to 49. So uh, siege tanks do 70 uh, in siege mode base. It goes up to 85 if you upgrade it. But the point is that reducing it from 85 to like 83 really isn't that much of a big deal. You don't really care. There are some like specific things that you can do in uh, other matchups that make a bit of a difference. Like you can do some funky stuff with armor and PvZ, but basically attack. The answer to which upgrade to get is attack. So we're going to go gas before our second pylon because of the PvT. So gas before our third pylon. Because we're not going to build the next two zealots. So we can actually just hold on this, build a uh, free zealot, build a cybernetics core, and then go pylon, and we'll be fine because we are. Yeah, our gateways are not going to be building anything, so we're not going to be supply blocked. When that finishes, we want to make sure we get our probes on the gas. Again, we're using the G command for gather. Pylon on 24, and off go the zealots. Now it looks like he's got the placement there that allows him to do uh, micro, so we're actually just going to go straight for the workers this game. If he gives me marines to kill, I'll kill them, but basically we're going for workers. Interesting. Okay. We've got two SUVs. Uh, he built a single vulture. I'm going to go Robo before range. Now the reasoning on that is that I've got these zealots, which my, my army is kind of stronger than normal, right? Normally you wouldn't have these zealots. If you try some kind of weird marine shenanigans, I'm not worried I've got zealots. Uh, however, the vultures give him a lot of map control with mines, and so I want to be able to negate that map control fairly early on. See, I'm not actually uh, too worried about uh, getting range at this time. I'm also going to expand. I'm going to expand because I feel like... Uh, 
these two guns are going to put on some pressure. He's probably going to do like his own bunker to defend against them. If he does his own bunker, I'm feeling good. He had a lot of marines. Yeah, so there's the bunker. And there's the CC. So yeah, expansion was the right call. Uh, I'm going to struggle to explain like how I knew that, but somehow I knew it. It just it felt like a bunker position. He It felt like he was playing kind of defensively. It felt like he was worried about uh, my pressure and that he wanted to just make sure that he shut down what I was doing so he could take his normal opener. I don't know. It's tough to really know why I do what I do. That feels like the best answer I have. Uh, you always want to make sure that you have a unit in the choke. So I do want to take another base, but I don't want to take another base before I get the uh, uh, observer inside his base because he could have uh, he could be going for like four factory behind this. I don't know, and if I don't know, I need to make sure I'm playing it safe. So. I will keep my build kind of loose and flexible until I know what's going on. Press C as the probes show up, just to make sure that the ones who can split for free will split for free. These two guns here are hanging out because there could have been mines behind them, so I wanted to make sure that I cleared that path. We're going to add a third gateway. We might not need a third gateway, but it's, gateways are really cheap. So we add the gateway and then we might not build out of it, but it's better to have it and not need it. Okay, we got some tanks. CC is not flashing. Okay, it's flashing again now, so he just stopped for a bit. Armory only now starting. Interesting. So, what does a really late army mean? A really late army means that he's not going to have any real kind of timings on me this game. He's playing very, very defensively. If I can make it through the uh, early part of the game, I am extremely happy. Because, uh, yeah, the... Normally it's the Terran upgrades that kill you. This game it won't be the Terran upgrades to kill me because he's not getting any. So we're going to build some units. We're going to take our third base. Clear that with a observer. Make sure we know his factory count. Keep building probes. Got a lot of missile targets too. Build a nice pylon wall up here to control the vulture flow. Make sure our probes are mining. That's not where that was meant to go. Keep probes building. Keep probes building. Okay, he's adding factories. I don't think he has a starport. I don't think he's going for like actual any kind of real uh, like tech. So I think that this game we are just going to build a shitload of gateways and run them over. That's how it's going to go. So. PVT, uh, if they're going for like a high-tech uh, like upgrade style, you need to respond in kind. You need to have your own like specific techs that beat what he's doing. But this game, he's just building a lot of factories and with like late upgrades. So we're really not as worried as we normally would be. I might actually stop building uh, uh, probes a little bit and build some more gateways. Oh, I took that base. Interesting. Okay. I kind of misjudged this. 
I didn't realize we were taking that third at this timing. That's fine. We have a lot of workers. His upgrade timings are he doesn't have any. Oh, sure, he doesn't want to move out right now. What am I hearing? The siege tank is shooting at something and I don't know what. Hmm. Where is that? Oh, it's over there. Okay. I didn't realize that could range. Oh wow, that fits through. Oh shit. I could have sworn that forge was going to block it. Let's have that Zalot defuse the mine. So yeah, he doesn't actually have any upgrade timings, as I was mentioning. His upgrades are really, really late this game, which is fine for me. I'm good with him not having any upgrades in a PVT. Losing all the probes wasn't ideal, but whatever. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff right now. So we're just going to make a move. He has to take another base to really do anything. And that base has to be this one. So let's just attack move and see where we're at.
looks like we're in a pretty good spot. When did I win? When I made all those probes. Wish I had Storm. Oh well. Seventy four? Nope, we're not gonna have it. Okay. I really could have waited there, but I just didn't want to. Yeah, we just had more stuff. You build the probes. I didn't win this by like fancy micro, I didn't win this by you know, getting any kind of like secret timing. I built workers. I built lots and lots of workers. I've got an Arbiter over here. Oh shit. Lots and lots of units. And that really is it. That's all there is to it. I'm not very fast, my micro is not that good, my macro is not that good, but I can build units. Well, most importantly, I can build workers, and the workers give you units. Uh, carriers are probably the most user friendly uh, in uh, PVT. So, uh, 
stringent hide that's a difficult question to answer uh all your questions are difficult which means they're good questions i like the questions you're asking about but i mean it depends on the timing it depends on like the, the gas they're taking uh it's it depends on like if their vax is flashing if there's a lot of cues early on that like tell you if they're going to try and fetch your nexus versus taking an expansion uh depends on the army timing it depends on the starport timing so that game, the army was late, he didn't go... So, uh, okay, so standard opener is factory, uh, bunker at the natural, CC, armory. So armory before the second factory. That is like a upgrade heavy opener. So that up, uh, opener you play very passive against because there's not really much you can do against it and you don't want to build too many units. Against that opener you scout it with the observer and then you take a third. Uh, it was if you s if your observer gets in, you see two factories with double machine shops spinning after the expansion. That's a very aggressive opener. That means he's going for vulture mines and speeds at the same time. He's probably building like three tanks off his first machine shop and then going into mass vulture to reinforce those tanks with a vulture flood. But uh, or if uh, you see he's gone for factory armory factory and then another three factory to go to a quick four fact. That is again quite aggressive. He's not going for starport. He's not going for his plus two. He's not going for two one timing. That is a timing attack build. So that game that we just played, I said he was uh, playing quite aggressively because I saw him go f a lot of factories before his starport, and I thought he was trying to pressure. Now I actually misread it. That was a expansion off of uh, a bunch of units, which he didn't need to build that many units to do that. So it was not really optimal what he was doing, it's why I misread it, but uh, the factory count implied some kind of aggression because he was hurting his upgrade timings. Pile on there will improve your mining. Okay, so this is actually the best opener he could have done against a, a two gate. Cause this opener will give him a uh, lot of lava, and lava is what you need. Because the two gate wins not by uh, killing them, but by forcing them to choose between building uh, building drones or building uh, links. He, that, he does not want a creep colony there. That is a mistake by him. I don't know why he's building a sunken in his main. I don't know why he's doing that either. I don't think he knows what the rush timing of uh, a two gate is because like, he's losing units for free here. Okay, he's going to try and build a sunken, so I'm just going to not let him. Do 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 It only works if you say do. If you don't say do, he could build the sunken. So make sure you you say the do. Okay, so we're gonna uh, pull back because he's got a bunch of links, as we can see. The thing is, he's building too many lings now. He has used so many lava. He built a sunken in his main, he lost the drone, he built a sunken in his natural, and then he built nothing but lings for like an hour. I was going to say an hour. It's not quite an hour, but it's been a while. Whereas we, as Protoss, can keep two gateways running and build probes non-stop. That is our Protoss uh, supremacy right there. 
So we are forcing him to not build drones. We're not actually killing any drones, but him not making drones is the exact same thing. I'll link to my YouTube channel after the game. I'm going to send out a scout probe just to see what's going on. If he's any good, his uh, overlord will see this and kill it, but we'll do it anyway. No link speed. Interesting. No link speed is very interesting. I think Hydra's maybe. So I would normally keep a bunch of uh, Zealots back in case of a uh, counter-attack, but no link speed tells me no counter-attack. This is not some kind of weird link flood. So I'm just going to grab all my Zealots and go across the map. Now uh, if it's Hydras they will trade okay, if it's uh, Muters they will buy time for me. If it's uh, Lurkers then I'll have a cannon over there. So we're thinking about loss conditions again. It's always going to be thinking about loss conditions. Okay, so it's Hydras. Now he's lost all his drones. I've been building drones this entire time. I have a sub probes this entire time. I have a lot of probes. He's only now starting his lair. Yeah, we're in good shape. I really should have killed that though. One more zealot attacking that would have been fine. Those really should have been standing in the wall too. We're building up some Corsairs just because it's always nice to have some Corsairs. There's basically never a game that you don't want a bunch of Corsairs in PvZ. I'm going to stop building probes, even though the one rule is that you never stop building probes. He's lost track of where my units are. He, he's missed this move out. And I just have more stuff. Just more stuff.
More phobes, more money. Problem is, parts of that game were a little bit technical, which is not what I'm trying to do on the F2S stream, but like the decision of when to just uh, build Zealots and when to push is kind of dependent on what your read is. So that game, I was reading it as a uh, game where he was trying to recover from how defensive he was early game. Early game, he went for two sunkens, he lost a drone, and he built a shitload of links. And so early game, he has destroyed his own economy. Now, when they destroy their own economy, they can either try to recover or they can go all in. If they go all in and you push out, you can lose. If they try and recover, you need to push out to punish them. So it's not the easiest to work out which it is to do. But uh, the fact that he had no link speed was a big tell in terms of it being a recovery play. No link speed, so it was like, okay, it's, uh, if he was going for a link backstab, he would have that. So the only way I can get value out of my Zealots now is by punishing him for not building uh, defense. And also, if he's rushing to some kind of weird tech, if he's not going for economy or links, if he's going for like the quickest muter possible, then the zealots would be on his side of the map around the time that he, the muter would spawn, and so that would be handy to have those. Straighten up the, that probe. Now we're straighten up the mining on that probe. We'll take one more shot to get that one mining exactly how we want it, but. There we go. That's w the way we want it. Now we'll fix that one. So we're just going to fix one probe at a time on the early game. Not going to overcomplicate it on the uh, mining. Boost. Also, if you don't want to boost, then you could just mine this crystal. This crystal is almost as good as that one when boosted. And boost. And boost. Nothing really to do early game, so you can just boost. And 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 boost. Boost and boost go to zealots So as I mentioned uh, before, I'm mechanically not very good at this game. I am uh, my APM is really low, my multitasking is bad, my micro is not very good. Like my micro is not good enough to use weavers or whatever. It's, but I can build workers, and that really is the key thing at this uh, level. Okay, so this was an overpull by that timing. So he's going to actually build a bunch of links to deal with this. So I'm, I'm not going to pressure him right now because right now is when he's kind of stronger. 
I'm going to wait till I have a few more zealots because the more zealots you have, the harder it is for him to get surface area. So this is going to be my uh, go time, I think. I'm basically just going to keep forcing him to build so to build zerglings. If he's building zerglings, he's not building drones. If he's not building drones, I'm getting ahead because I'm building probes non-stop. That's a good number of zerglings. That'll do. And so I don't actually need to trade off the zealots at this point. The zealots don't need to die for this to be working. Because uh, if you think about every time he builds lings, he's not building drones, right? So the question is, how is a ling worth something? What what does a ling do for you? A ling a ling helps you by preventing you from dying. A ling helps you by d doing damage to your opponent. A ling helps you by attacking a zealot. The way you counter zerglings is you don't give them anything to attack. If you don't give the zerglings anything to attack, then they are just dead supply. They are just drones that he didn't build. He's got speed. Okay. So that overlord was looking for my uh, cybernetics core, but he couldn't find it. So yeah, right now I'm countering his uh, his Link production is link speed by just not feeding him. I'm giving him nothing to actually uh, use them on. So right now it's just a waste. Pure waste. So I haven't really done anything this game and I still think I'm ahead. Which is always fun. have liked to have killed that, but it is what it is. And then I'm going to move towards plus one says. Because on this map, unlike most maps, uh, it's actually quite risky to go uh, for uh, zealot openings because it's a flat map, which means that uh, hydras are extra dangerous. So you need to have the forge and the uh, The ability to build cannons. Oh, it's a lair, okay. So right now I can actually just expand off of this position, I think. Because uh, he has to... His, what, what does his core says? So once his mutant is finished, they have to stay home. They can't really do anything right now. See if I can find the other one. And also I can threaten to counterattack non-stop with the Corsairs. Okay, so there's the other one I saw earlier. Can't really afford to lose those, so uh, this is kind of risky what I'm doing here with the actually attacking with it. It's fine. And so he was only on two hatcheries all this time, so... Uh. 
Now I have plus one speed lots. So he's going to really struggle to take another base this game. Because the plus one speed lots are going to get me a lot of map control. But he has to expand because he can't attack. Uh, my bases are too well defended for him to uh, play this a long game. But if he plays this a, sh a uh, so he's played this short game, he cannot finish me off. So he has to attack. So so he has to expand. But then my plus one speed dots are just going to wreck that. Heal those up. That has to be muters over there, so let's turn these around. And we're good. Okay, expansion will be up here somewhere. Okay, it's that base. So let's go deal with that. Oh, he already had this one earlier. I could have killed this one ages ago. Who knew? I wonder if I can get both of these, or if I should pick one. Oh, I got both. Very nice. Okay, let's run away. Lots of units. Also, getting his Evo was kind of huge. I'm misreading the opponents in some of these games, which isn't ideal. Need to be paying more attention to my reads. Like my first Zealot should have uh, just denied that base. But I didn't know it was there because I wasn't reading him right. These Dragoons do not have the Dragoon upgrade. Oh well. Killing the Evo was really big. That makes the game a lot harder for him. If the Evo's down. Oh, I did send a probe. Oh shit, there goes my High Templar.
Gonna deny his upgrades again. What are you doing over there, buddy? That's not a safe place for you to be. Oh, of course, that's my. That's the probe that's with my Corsairs. That's why that's over there. He's still on zero zero because I keep killing his uh, Evo. None of these engagements have actually been that good for me, but the thing is, I just keep building probes. Just, I have a, so much money. Another army, I'll send that to attack. Another army, I'll send that to attack. I'd actually have that many probes this game. I'm looking at my base, I'm like, actually, I'm not very well saturated. Yeah, maybe I should slow down for a little bit, build some uh, high time like of energy. I mean, I've still won, obviously, but it's... Uh, Need to let some of these new bases kick in. Yeah, my natural's kind of undersaturated. It's an issue. Oh, he has the Evo upgrade. So the armor upgrade. Interesting. That is not the one I would have picked in his spot. One of you guys can go hang out over here. It's not, he's not actually ever going to attack my bases, but still, it's the principle of the thing. It's, it's good to have units defending bases. But he's not going to attack ever. So this game, his entire thing is that he's going to... 
is that he's going to try and just uh, take these bases and maybe take a fourth over there at the middle only. He doesn't actually have a win condition. He's not thinking about it in those terms, though, so he doesn't know he doesn't have a win condition. But like he's looking to establish those four bases, and then he doesn't really know what happens after that. He doesn't have upgrades. He's not going to ever be able to take these bases. So his win condition would be to establish 12 o'clock. But he has absolutely zero plan to establish 12 o'clock right now. That's what I meant by he doesn't have a win condition. is There's no actual way for him to get from where he is to where he wants to be. And if he can't take 12 o'clock, he can't win. Oh, I've underestimated him. He wants 12 o'clock. He's identified it. He's not actually going to be able to take it. But this is the right idea by him. This is exactly the play he needed to make. It's also why I came up here to deny it. Because it's, it's such an obviously good play that, you know, I was able to blind read it, but still. Like, I, it was the right play. I'm, I like that. That's good by him, trying to take that base. It was a, you know, it was, it was a Hail Mary. It wasn't actually going to work, but it was the right thing to try. And now he's out. Because, yeah, if he didn't take 12 o'clock, there was just no way he could play as well at the situation. If he tried to just lock down on that corner, I was going to be able to take uh, my men alone. I was going to be able to then move up and just deny 12 o'clock from him. If I deny 12 o'clock, there's no win condition. We're always going to be even on bases. No, that's not the real color. MLPG is a uh, South... Uh, it's like the Peruvian Star League uh, tag. So it's uh, like BSL, but for Peru. So Carla would not be playing in that. And he wouldn't be speaking Spanish at me. This is not Carla. So uh, Dandy, the uh, Peruvian player, nicknamed me Tortuguita uh, in the Peruvian scene, the, to the turtle. That Vax really should be flashing. Yeah. 
So we're going to build... We're going to build the core before we build the... Uh, uh, the next pylon. <laughs> Apparently it can't be me, my micro's not good enough. to be rank and we're just doing the same opening every single game well this calls for a celebration oh, thank you for the sub appreciate it that simpsons clip always makes me happy Good old Algar. Wonder what he's up to at the moment. You know, he actually won Florida. He won that election. But by the time that they worked out he'd won it, uh, it was you know too late to say anything, and it felt like it'd be rude to just you know take it away from Bush. Bush was. Uh, Already feeling like he had won, and they he was so happy, and they just didn't feel like it would be fair to uh, just take it away from him after he was after he'd already like had some fireworks and you know banners. What a world! One thirteen gateway. That is how it is done on the right side mining. See that ship? Fucking 113. And it really does make a difference having the zealot show up a few seconds earlier. We got right side mining, so we're going to go for a uh, 15 pile on this game. Because you don't lose that much pro production time. And it uh, gets the right side mining speed things up. Grab the gas. And we're going to go straight core after this. We're not going to build another pylon yet. 
because it's PvT. So we don't we need the uh We'll build a probe first, we'll do a fourteen. He's sending a second SCV, that's odd. Bunker's not what I would have chosen, but okay. I lost a probe just now to, to the SUV. I'm just feeling lazy, so I'm just going to flash him with goons while going DT. Because uh, he's lost a bunch of uh, workers, he's lost mining time, he doesn't have any vision on me. Doesn't really have any way he can deal with uh, rangeless goons. So I figured why not. He's got a bunker just natural, he could possibly expand, but then I'll just counter expand. Oh, interesting. That's a bit sloppy by me. I shouldn't have thrown those away. Doesn't make a difference, but you know, I shouldn't have done it. Two kills on the probe. Yeah, the DT will finish him off. He's got no vultures on the map, there's not going to be any mines. He's got absolutely nothing that can potentially uh, deal with a DT. And even if he does, I've got an expansion behind it. Though that's not super useful for education that I went DT because the decision to go DT is very, very situational, so it's not the best thing to do in a teaching stream because then you have to either explain why you went DT or you have to, uh, have, or you're teaching them to do it every time. But this game, he looked like he was in such a defensive posture that it seemed like he would be focusing on doing exactly what he's done here, which is siege. A bunch of uh, barracks. That wasn't really what I was expecting, but okay, it's cool. Oh, we're going mean medic. Yeah, this isn't the trade you want, friend.
505 APM on that guy. It's one of the highest APMs I've ever seen. And yet he uh, couldn't micro marines. Yeah, it's uh, he'd cut SCVs. He was uh, he'd lost SCVs early. He was uh, like building a bunch of means. It felt like he was not going to have an answer to a DT. It felt like he was going to be like not going to be doing like a normal vulture timing with uh, mines. I don't know. It just seemed like a DT game. He also lost his SCV early, so he wasn't going to be able to see inside my base. There was some kind of idea behind it, it wasn't just going DT, but I don't know. Another PVT on Silford. This is not really the map that I want to two gate on, but this is a two gate every game stream, so we are going to two gate. And one of the things that I like about the two get every game is that like you it should give you the practice you need to hit timings if you're trying to copy this. You should be able to hit your like one fourteen, one fifteen gateway if you're going to get every single game. One thirteen. See that's how it's done. our boosts. We went for 15 pylon but we were able to get the probe immediately afterwards because uh, the mineral boost on the right side mining. Gonna unhock you the probe, hock you the zealot, just send it across the map and take our gas. So this is a PVT specific thing, we're not going to do the same thing in every matchup, but PVT we're going to go for like a 22 gas, because we do need to take gas eventually. Zealots are not great against vultures. And we're going to delay the pylon for that because we don't really need a pylon when we're going for uh, a quick core, because we're not building any zealots right now. So. Yeah, that bunker's not going to finish, buddy. That was a good amount of kills. And also, he wouldn't have had time to take his refinery behind that, so... 
I feel like I can just build a shitload of goons and pressure his bunker. And also I can go next at the same time actually, I think. Because his siege tank timing is going to be he doesn't have a siege tank timing. I could also double expand. Both good options. I think I'll double expand. Because again, his, vo his vulture timing is going to be he doesn't have a vulture timing. But uh, he probably, he'll be able to repair his bunker for a year and then just uh, build a siege mode behind it. But the fact that that's such an obvious play is why my double expand is going to work. Cause that is what he has to do in this spot, so. I can just not build any units. This is that part of the PVT concepts that uh, I want to be talking about too, is the stop go. So uh, stop go is very important in PVT. There are phases in which uh, you don't need to build any units because your opponent cannot do anything. Your opponent is tacking up, they're getting upgrades, they are getting stuff that cannot pressure. So it would have been a mistake for me to be building goons all this time. My gateways have been offline for a few minutes now. Because there is no pressure coming out of him. So I turn my gateways offline, I just go into a uh, double nexus and then also a robo with no unit production for a while. Because what am I going to do with the units? Nothing. I'm not going to get anything done. So why build them? Whereas if I built the units then I wouldn't be able to deal with him later. You have to stop for a little bit so that you can go when it counts. And that's the c mistake that a lot of people make about PVT is that they uh, they don't do the stops. But you have to. If you don't do the stops then you can't do the go. Yeah, his siege tank timing here is comical. This is not the play front.
That's a lot of siege tanks. a lot of factories. Maybe I should stop expanding for a little. Nah. I should stop expanding. Not ever.
So he doesn't actually have the gas to sustainably uh, make Goliaths this game. Which is kind of amusing to me. He's going mass uh, Goliath now, but he's not building tanks. Oh, he never actually had that base. Oh, shit. I assume he had it. Yeah, he doesn't have any gas, so uh, really. <laughs> he can go pure Goliath, but the thing about pure Goliath is... Pure Goliath does not actually make a very balanced army. He doesn't have the gas to do what he wants to do here. He only had two tanks in his entire army. In a second I'm going to kill his CCs and then he's going to have no detection.
His opener was just unprepared to deal with uh, three zealots, especially the uh, gateway timings I had, so he was massively, massively far behind, and I did the stop go. If you just keep your gateways building units constantly in PvT, that can really hurt you. Because having units when you don't need units means that you're not getting nexus, you're not getting tech when you need those. It's not just about the stuff you get, it's about the order you get it. If you take goons when they can't press, if you make goons when they can't press you, then you're going to end up trying to take nexuses when they can press you, which is not the right time to try and take nexuses. Going for a 113 gateway timing because we've got the right side mining. Let's see if we can do it. You have enough 113. See, it's not so hard. Decent split, and uh, that'll do it. Just practice. Went for a fifteen pylon because we've got the right side mining. Not there. Go two more zealots. Pylon. Keep mineral boosting. Interesting. I'm going to hide a zealot on the map, put these two on the wall. So he has no hatchery. No hatchery means that he's uh, going to be limited on lava, which is great for us with this opening. Because he can't actually build that many zerglings long term. He has a lot of zerglings right now because he's just building zerglings off of his one hatchery. But if he'd gone for a second hatchery, if he'd gone for like a 12 hat, then in a few minutes he would have way more zerlings than he could have right now. So, nine pool, no expansion is really exactly the, what you want them to do against uh, your two gate. Best possible scenario. He can't threaten my ramp. Oh, I think he saw me there. Yeah, he did. 
Let's see if I can find this guy somewhere to hide. I can send every single one of my zealots because he's very out of position and because he doesn't have that many links. And he can't make that many links because he doesn't have a second hatchery. So I can just send them all across the map and there's fuck all he can do about it. And that's GG. Because he built all those links and he got no value out of them. Which meant he didn't have the hatchery, he didn't have the drones. Which meant that by the time uh, that I actually push, he's got no links at all. Whereas if he'd gone for like a 12 hatchery, he would have had uh, shitloads more links. The lack of lava early on really, really does hurt you. All I had to do was uh, not take any damage. PVT on Silford. At some point, the two gate zealots are going to stop working PVT on Silford. I don't know when, but it has to happen at some point. The mining on this base feels so much worse than all the others. Like there's no chance for 113 gateway on this spawn. Boost that one there. You must construct additional pylons. Uh, one fifteen. Not great, not terrible. Although if you build it next to Nexus it's always a little bit quicker, so I feel like that's cheating somehow. Forty on the second gateway. So we're like a good three seconds behind where we'd be if we were on the mid right. And three seconds on your first zealot really is such a difference. He's over here. Okay.
Only one SUV on gas, so he's going into a single factory. I'm not going to keep my probe with my uh, with my zealot because I don't think my uh, probe micro is good enough to make a difference. So we killed two SCVs and some Marines, maybe lost three Zealots. It wasn't the best trade I've ever done, was it? But the thing is that uh, we saw there was no second factory. He's not going to do a uh, pressure build off of this. He's going to do an expansion off of this. Losing his first vulture loses him so much map control too. He did not want to lose that vulture. And again, this is the stop go that I was talking about. This is a, a good example of it. So I built two dragoons, then I went for Robo, then I went for Nexus, then I went for Range. I have not built any units in quite a while here because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a bunker. And if there is, I'm not going to need one. So yeah, bunker CC. So what am I going to be afraid of? The one Dragoon for checking what's going on on the map, and the second Dragoon was just sitting in my choke so that he couldn't get a bolt into my base. That's all I needed to do. So I do want a Nexus, but I'm not going to take my Nexus until I've confirmed that uh, it's not a bunch of factories. Because if it's like five factories, Nexus would be a mistake. I'm just going to hold off for now. Because you don't need to take it immediately. You can wait. We can next us. Two factories is fine. And ideally we would have nexused earlier, but the thing is that it's just this was definitely gonna be fine.
So he's only got three factories out. Interesting. I feel like there's something here that I'm not seeing, but I don't know what it is because I'm not seeing it. Starport. So we're going to take a fourth base, and because we're taking a fourth base, we're not going to go into a quick, uh, like, Arbitral Carrier uh, transition. Because there's not going to be any time for that. I'm going to need more gateways than this. I've stopped playing well at this point. I'm I'm missing all my timings. Oh, he's going for a CC, is he? Interesting. Didn't feel like he was going for a CC, it felt like he was going for some kind of push timing. Oh well. Yeah, I keep missing so many pylons this game.
Ooh, there's an army over here. Oh, it's not even spinning. Okay, never mind. I've got 3,000 minerals. I should do something about that. Can I put this target anywhere? Can I do that? I've got on there. As always, it's just the resources. You build workers. <laughs> the opening didn't really do any damage, but it doesn't matter. Because following the opening, I uh, built two Dragoons with no range. I identified that he was going for a CC. One Dragoon went out to confirm the CC. The other Dragoon stayed home and blocked off the Vulture. We confirmed it with the CC. 
Vulture did nothing. Rushed an observer before range. Observer confirmed that it wasn't like a fourth act. And also helped me clear some minds. Once I knew it wasn't a fourth act, I could just double expand. And I'm on four bases, and he's got nothing. He tried to take a slow third to counter my four bases, but a slow third does not counter four bases. One of the nice things about going the same build every single matchup is that sometimes you run into a random and you just do not care because uh, you go in the same build. Oh, that was ugly. That was a late pylon. I picked the wrong probe to try and build it. I tried to build it with this probe up here for no reason. I should have taken a probe from this side. That wouldn't have gotten stuck. I know every other game I've scouted on 12, but this game I'm going to scout on 10. Just because it's a random. Give a little bit of respect. Especially given that randoms are more likely to do like a proxy 9-9. Or a 4 pull. I'm going to cancel that second uh, Zelda and go for a quicker gas. be able to finish off that STV with this and I can just go in straight into a DT. Hmm. His STV didn't come home. That is a lot of STV to be ho holding on the ramp. That cannot be optimal. Oh, uh, there's his uh, STV. So. Uh, There we go. We're just going to go DT expand. Don't even need anything on the ramp because we know where his uh, stuff is. Oh, 
he can waste his time doing this if he wants. That's a CC. Okay. Seeing that was definitely worth it. It's going to be like a mine expansion. First goon's going to go out and uh, make sure there's no funny business going on on the map. DT will follow. So he's got Novo unit production, which is nice. Losing his first tank did not help him either. He's lost a... Uh, the first tank he's lost like three vultures pressuring me. And I've been able to do all of this off of just two dragoons. I'm starting my arbiter at seven minutes. Before I even get my dragoon range. Three base arbiter before dragoon range. And the thing is it wasn't actually unsafe because I knew what he had. I knew what he had because I kept checking. But we'll just finish this with a recall in a minute. Just stop, go. I stopped my unit production after two zealots went straight into DT. Built two dragoons only, just enough to d uh, deter vultures. And then when it was go time, it was go time. I shouldn't have let that happen, but whatever. It's fine.
Oh shit. It's a good play with that vulture. Denying my uh, expansion probe like that. Are we going for a CC? Nope. Yeah, he's n he's building a bunch of units, but he's not going to be able to pressure. I don't know why he's building so many units, honestly. That was a bit mean. He seems to think it's go time. That's interesting. I also think it's go time, so one of us is wrong. Who do you think it is? Do you think it's uh, go time or not go time? I got exactly one vulture with my... Okay. That's kind of funny. Thing is, if I just kill your comsats, then there really isn't much you can do, is there? I'm going to send a DT at you now, friend. You can't see them. They're cloaked, buddy. So, uh, again, that was the stop-go PVT. That was... Uh I built two zealots to put a bunch of pressure on, then I stopped, then I went uh, gas core with my gateways completely idle. I built two dragoons, one to uh, get pressure on the map, one to hold my ramp. Then I went back into uh, tech, gateways completely idle. I built a nexus and uh, all DT tech offered just two dragoons. Built the 1DT, then I went into uh, Stargate, Arbiter Tribunal, Robo, off of just again the two goons and the DT. You don't need units unless you need units. But if you spend all your time in PVT building units, you're not going to have the uh, tech and the economy you need when you need them. It's not about the stuff you make, it's about the stuff you don't make.
114 gateway, not bad for left side mining. Uh, I prefer PvZ. PvP is difficult for me because I can't use Weavers. If you can't use Weavers, PvP is not going to be your friend. I just don't have the control for them. Interesting. So this game's done. Don't do that, PvP. It's not the opener to use. Like, if I go two gateways in a close position, you're just dead. You're just dead. It's just not a viable opener, but people do it, and they're just like, well, maybe you'll last scout me. Maybe I will last scout you, but, you know, you can't rely on that. Another PVT on Silford. At some point, my two gate opener will stop working PVT. That was just me being the build order, please, and just saying you've done an illegal build order. Now you must forfeit the game. A lot of games are just, uh, if they do a build and you scout it, then you do the counter build and it's done. But people do builds that don't actually work, because they don't either don't know why they don't work, or they're just hoping that it's not going to get scouted. A lot of people on ladder don't really know how to win. So 
So you just play build all the place. My probe scouted that he had a gateway, so he went for the Nexus gateway opener, which is the greedy one that you do in case they go uh, for like a one gate. If he went Nexus Forge, I would cancel my uh, second zealot, and then I'd do a run by with my first zealot. That would be the play. And then my, my, I'd use my first zealot to just uh, deny mining inside his main forever. But uh, with the gateway, I could just uh, kill him. The uh, the forge cannon version, you can't kill as easily. They can actually hold if they just build uh, cannons. But even though you can't end the game, you can just counter expand and you'll be fine. It really annoys me that sometimes when you send a probe to mine a mineral patch, it just starts going backwards up and down here because it can't work it out. Like, that is not good game design. That sometimes you're just not allowed to mine minerals. Here's Scout SCVs late. If I was getting first scouted, there should have been no Scout SCV in my base already. If I was getting second scouted, my uh, probe would have seen it. So he's just not scouting. It's very unusual. Not scouting often indicates like a uh, Vax CC or a CC first, where they don't really care what you're doing because they're going bunker anyway. Interesting. That is a second factory, friend. Spicy. Who goes two fac in this day and age? He's skipping the vulture too. This is very spicy. I'm going to delay my uh, my uh, robo for the uh, faster, so I'm delay my range for the faster robo because he's going to do a mine push and I want to have the, uh, the observers in time. I can go back for the range. Which is what I'm going to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, my gas is a little bit tight this game, but it's fine. I can make it work. I just need to make sure that my timings line up. And Zealots are okay. Like, Zealots aren't the, aren't the best, but they're fine. If you don't have the gas for what you want, you get what you can get. What I want is Dragoons, what I can get is Zealots. And also Zealots, later on, you can put them in a shuttle and they're great against tanks. So, I mean, it's not... Like, I can't do anything with them. But his two fact, his bunker, and the fact that he lost a bunch of STVs basically put him all in anyway. So this game is pretty much done. I just need to not die to his first push. We got away with Robo before range, which was nice. We weren't always going to get away with that, so the fact that we did is pretty good for us. Put one dragoon in the choke just because. Hit. Notice his CC isn't flashing. If CC not flashing, means that it isn't uh, any kind of. Uh, like, so he's not building SCVs, and if he's not building SCVs, you're really not that worried. So he's, uh, he's cutting SCVs to do that. And it didn't work very well, did it? So now we have to come up with a new plan. You're looking for, okay, you've got Siege, but the thing is that uh, you've got no economy. You were cutting SCVs that entire time. All you've got is... A handful of... Uh, I can actually just go finish him off at this point, if I'm honest. So I'm not going to build any more units for a bit. I'm going to double expand. And I'm going to grab uh, the Bulldog. This attack here with the... Uh, Shuttle is called a bulldog. I don't know why. It's just what it's called. Two fact was not the play. It's not that he didn't; he just didn't have uh, anything, because uh, 
one base Terran does not beat one base Protoss. Even though like three base Terran beats three, ba pro three base Protoss, that's because at that point there's a critical mass. The more Terran you put together, the stronger it gets. It's like they get like an aura that boosts each other. No, there's no proxy factory. It was just a two-pack. But the thing is, in low numbers, Protoss units are just much, much stronger. The Terran only gets strong as it hits critical mass and you get the synergies. The tanks are made much more effective by the vultures blocking by the mass mines. Are they just just random vultures? Vultures are just all over the place. That's how they work. But, uh, yeah, one base versus one base. As a Protoss, you just say, okay, I'm going to get observers and I'm going to go free gates. And I'm going to build mass Dragoon and it's just going to run over you. Because two factors not beat uh, Dragoons. It's you. You have to have more bases in the Terran as the numbers get higher. But in that game, it's just my only risk was that my observer time was going to be late, which is why I cut the way I did. Why I delayed my dragoon range to make sure that I got observers as quickly as possible, and why I didn't build dragoons beyond the first two. One to scout and one to defend. So my ramp was so my choke could be held against vultures. Because I had to manage my gas quite carefully. If I used my gas badly there, I would not be able to hit the timings I needed. But once I confirmed it was just two fat and I ha I had dragoon range, I had uh uh, observer, it was just fine. That's an odd scout timing. So I'm not going to get this game, I'm just going to make sure he can't proxy, uh, sorry, mana pile on me. Because that's such a weird scout timing that mana pile on is the only thing that really makes any kind of sense for him to, to he had to get compensation for that scout timing. That probe is so early that it's going to really hurt him unless he gets something out of it. So by denying uh, any kind of mana pylon, I'm denying him the value he's looking for with it. So it's very confusing. There could be two gateways in the middle of the map, I wouldn't have seen them. So it's just a first scout after scouting on eight, I guess. Not a fan of the eight scout. Wow, that really should have died. So I cancelled my range and I went for uh, Robo because he's. I don't know, he's playing kind of suspect. And you can go back for range later, you don't need to rush range. A second scout probe. Well, that's an odd choice.
This feels very strange. Like he's committing a lot to this, and he's not gotten much out. He did a his first gap was very very early. And then he didn't do anything off of it. He's missing range. This feels a lot like DTs to me. Although you shouldn't go DTs, given that I have gone uh, Robo and he's seen my Robo, is the other thing. That's my range. This is confusing the hell out of me. How is he doing this? Just no tech at all? This is GG, I've lost. The Quick Observer didn't do anything, is the issue. If I'd gone Reaver, I'd have been okay, but... but if I'd attacked uh, beforehand... There's a Dragoon over there. I wonder why that's there. Oh, that's one of my early Dragoons that I uh, sent out to look for the Scout Probe. Uh, now I remember. And a second gas. Ooh. It's a bit greedy. This one's basically over. I just don't have the money to match him. It's an interesting cheese.
Nice, they got the observer. I was looking for that. He's on five gates though, which is a lot of gateways. More gateways than I have. And uh, taking a nexus. And cannoning it, okay. We're just going for a long game, are we? I'm behind, but I'm not so far behind a storm drop can get me back into it. Okay, I'm so far behind a storm drop, couldn't get me back into it. I'm amazed I'm still in this, honestly. Did my storm ever finish? Okay, there it is.
Oh shit, there's more than I thought there was. I pulled back too early. This does not feel like a game I can win. Hand up, shit. And we lost one. Let's take a look at that. That was kind of cheesy by him, but I mean, I still shouldn't be losing to B ranks. Eight scout. My build kind of sucks because I'm buoyed by the eight scout and I last scout him. <coughs> then he just does two goon nexus, I think. Yep, two goon nexus. See, so yeah, if I'm actually pressuring at all, I'm fine. And then he just, yeah, two goon nexus is a triple gate. It's a strong opener in terms of cheese. It's a. Uh, I mess back.
you have to be S rank to do an F to S stream, otherwise it doesn't really work. Otherwise it's F to like whatever rank you are. He didn't even do that that unsafely is the other thing. Uh, Flatty mate, the uh, issue is that uh, I don't have Dragoon range. So if I'm out on the map uh, and he has like three Dragoon to Dragoon range, he can kill all of those units with no losses. He can just micro against it. You don't. If you send out the goons by themselves, that's fine because uh, goons can run away from other goons. But if once you send out the zealots, you're committing. You have to take the fight. So if you send the zealots with your dragoons, you are you're going to take a fight. Yeah, I tanked this account down to F rank uh, at the start of the stream, like four hours ago. I just uh, left all five placements. Though losing that game uh, against that guy really hurt my streak because I was on like a twelve-game win streak, so. I was getting like 40 points per win and now I'm getting like 10 points per win again. So I probably won't get S in this uh, run unfortunately. I was only like 3 games from S but once you take a loss your your points per win go down a lot because uh, the matchmaking algorithm is trying to find your uh, ceiling and your floor. So what it will do is uh, if you've got a lot of wins in a row, it will assume that you're very much underrated. And it will start giving you more and more points each game. That was a terrible split. Silly thing is, had I actually gone two gate uh, last game, the way I was planning to, would have been fine. We're going two gate every game. We've been going two gate all games, all matchups, because uh, I'm trying to teach that two gate is the build that uh, people who watch this should uh, learn. And the one time I don't go two gate, I lose. So I guess we'll be enforcing that point that we should go two gate. Sorry, buddy. I was saying that uh, the one game that I didn't go uh, for two gate zealot rush is the game I lost. Every other game I went for two gate zealot rush and I won. Yeah, all matchups because uh, this is a stream where I'm trying to teach people how to do the build. And so it seemed easiest to just go for the exact same build in every game. this guy's S rank and two gate against S ranks on flat maps is not really optimal.
Because on flat maps, Goon is king. You can't just hold your uh, ramps. Because normally what you do is... Uh, they have range before you do. But it doesn't matter because you just uh, sit at the top of your ramp. But on a map with no ramp, you cannot just sit at the top of your ramp. Because there isn't one. Okay, we've confirmed again range, we've confirmed uh, that he's not building as many probes as he should be. He's going to have the range lead on me, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. We killed, I think, a probe or two, and we killed the Zealot. So that was actually a fine train trade. Obviously, uh, we would have preferred to have uh, killed even more, but we killed enough. Can I do F to F to Terran? No, I don't play Terran. I don't really know how to do that. Okay, that went well enough that uh, now it's time to go uh, defend to get DT, because I feel like I'm winning. And if you're winning, you start to think about the things that you can lose to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut Goon production after these three. Okay, that's a lot of goons. He's not going DT. Resume probe production. Need some scouting pylons. Oh, it is DT. Never mind. That gateway was pretty clutch, wasn't it? Yeah, I should just be able to counterattack attack once the uh, uh, observers out and just kill him because he's not he's got only got two gateways and he's not going to have the gas to go storm actually think about it he's not actually going to have the gas he's not going to have his units in position uh, his DTs are all the way over here aren't they 
DTs aren't going to do shit. Okay, never mind. There's one of them out here. A little bit hopeful there. A little bit optimistic. I'm behind at this point by quite a bit. I should have expanded sooner. This one's probably done. He's going to have a, a good amount of storm by the time he pushes out. My dragoons are going to get melted. We'll see what we can do, but I'm not feeling optimistic. Oh, I'm missing all my pylons. This is going to be a huge supply block. Yeah, I see. I've got plus one. That's nice, but it's not going to be enough. I'll have to go Dark on as well to get the uh, high Templar kills. He's already getting ready to move out. And I'm nowhere near the uh, attack I needed. Oh, there's a uh, thing over there, Observer. So he's moving out. He decided it's go time. Got one feedback only. Did he forget Storm? He forgot Storm. That's what's happening here. Yeah, he forgot his Storm upgrade. That's kind of funny. Oh well. 
That happens, I guess. So that's actually really big for me. I was quite far behind, but him losing all of those High Templar for free. Th that High Templar was his edge. He mined a bunch of gas early on and used it to bank all this energy on High Templar that he was going to then use to storm the shit out of my army. And the fight starts and he realizes he doesn't have storm. How are we doing on my storm? We'll have it by the time the fight starts. So that was my plus two that finished in that upgrade complete just now. <laughs> well, that was embarrassing for him. <laughs> uh, sometimes in life you just forget Storm. He had me. I was so dead. Uh, what's my motivation to teach people? I just like talking about StarCraft. I was in Gypsy's uh, Twitch chat uh, on Monday, I think, and uh, somebody asked him to do a uh, F to S for Protoss. And he said that he wouldn't, but that he would ask uh, some other Protoss to do it, and I volunteered. And said that later this week I would do an F to S. I think CVL is a good uh, a project. I, I really support it. But... Uh, I don't have time to coach for CPL. Okay, Fighting Spirit PvP. I don't like fighting spell either, buddy. I was so dead in that game against the DT Russia. The plus one uh, attack was... Uh, part of the problem. Right now, Jumper, I'm uh, pretty heavily into I-Series bonds just because I'm being very defensive in this economy. And they're paying a good guaranteed uh, return. So I've got like 50k of that. You can only buy 10k a year plus, uh, but you, there are some loopholes. You can get 10k uh, for your spouse too, plus any other family members, and uh, you can also buy them for future years by using their gift mechanic. But uh, they were paying like 9% uh, last year. Now they're paying like six and a half or something. But six and a half percent guaranteed return is not nothing. But you can't buy as much as you want, so I'm. I'm only like 50 into that. But yeah, 6.5% is not an oven. I'm a little bit worried that there'll be a like big recovery and I will miss it, but on the other hand, uh, there could be a crash and I will get caught by it, so... it's You can't time the market. I'm kind of hoping at some point I will talk myself out of the uh, I-series bonds, because th they are too defensive for my uh, overall uh, strategy. Not, not 
I've got a long investment horizon. I don't really need the cash right now. It's I've got more than enough income. So there's no real reason to have them beyond the fact that I'm just being a, c a coward. So Jumper, you'll be pleased to know that we have gone two gate every game this uh, stream. All matchups. That should have been a 16 pylon. That was a little bit wrong. Uh, two gate PVZ is there's not really a good flow chat for it. It's very very situational in terms of like whether you attack or defend. Because you're harassing by putting pressure on their lava. You're harassing by making it so that they uh, they can't uh, build the drones they want to. But if they do, so if they build drones, you need to push. If they don't build drones, you need to back. It's not uh, an easy balance. He's building a lot of links, so I'm going to just play defensive for a little bit. Because I do not want to give those links value. And the links only have value if they get to attack. There's nothing for the links to attack, the links aren't doing anything, they're just standing around, not being drones. I set these zealots out a few different ways on purpose to uh, try and be difficult to make it difficult for him to work out exactly how many I have. Oh, that's a waste. Can't be doing that. Okay, he's got link speed. So yeah, this is what we wanted to scout. He's panicked and he hasn't built any uh, units. So I haven't built any drones. So now we're back.
Now he has built drones, but he didn't want to. He still doesn't have very many. So I'm still actually fine to just keep this up. Because I'm just earning more than him, so I, the longer this goes on, the better for me. And all of those have shields, so they're just going to start recovering their hit points. It's fine by me. We can do this. Yeah, I just have more money. And that's how you do it. Look at the economy. You just didn't ha ever have any money. You build zealots and if they go lings you just play defensive, if they go drones you play aggressive. The zealots are the harass. As long as you don't trade them away you're fine. So the, the, it's kind of weird that the trick is not to fight with the zealots. Because uh, if the zerg player builds a drone, the value they get from that drone is income. If they build a ling, they've sacrificed that income, but they get the ability to kill something. If they build a ling and you don't give them anything to kill, then they've sacrificed that income, but they haven't actually gotten any benefit. They could have just built the drone and they'd have been fine. So the way you exploit lings is you just do not give them anything to actually attack. Uh, so if he went Hydra, Mutual, or Lurkers, I would have known because his link count would have been different. I was monitoring his uh, tech by monitoring his economy. Because, uh, I mean, I, I saw that he had like three drones as natural, right? I saw that he had all those links. He was not going Muta that game. Uh, there wasn't the economy. Yeah, I was watching him on a uh, second monitor. Clearly. Uh, no, against Hydra you just go slow lots. Just lots and lots of slow lots. You have to understand that... Uh, Early game, he is not getting the drone count he needs. So when you say Hydra, we're not talking very many Hydras here. We're talking enough Hydras that you can just run your Zealots past and start killing drones. We're talk like this is like AI level strategies. Jennifer, when is the last time you played against the uh, AI? Just played against a Protoss computer. And did you win? Because uh, having like 12 zealots show up in your base at random is actually surprisingly difficult to deal with. You'd think it wouldn't be so bad, but it really, it's quite difficult. Except with cross map. That's unfortunate. But we're still going to do the exact same opener. Yeah, because Zealots are beefy.
Okay, so this is cross map, so it's not really what I, the ideal scenario for what I want to do here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do a l bunch of pressure into uh, attack. Because all of his units are going to be on his side of the map worrying about the zealot, which means I don't actually need to be able to, I don't actually need anything on my map right now. Come on, into the, into this space. There we go. Okay, he's still building links. He's not building drones. That's what we needed to know. He's building links and backing my zealots. Because again, the only way that his uh, his links get any value is if there's zealots for them to kill. If there's no zealots, the links have no value. Let's back that one as well. Resume building zealots. So I haven't lost a zealot yet. Which means when the time comes, I'm going to have quite a few of them. And because I skipped zealots 4 and 5 and went straight into my gas and cybernetics, my stargate timing is actually pretty good. Meanwhile, he built all those links instead of building hatcheries, which means he does not actually have that many lava. I am well, Mr. Kimtection. So now he has to sacrifice uh, drones that he doesn't really want to to build a uh, hydro list that he uh, uh, like a hydro den, but the hydro den is not really what he wants to be building right now. It doesn't get him what he needs. Like hydras means he has to get the speed upgrade and the uh, range upgrade. That isn't really part of what his build right now. He doesn't want to be getting those. He's got two hat hydra. Two hat hydra is not a strong position to be in, is Zerg. But we're just forcing him into this really uncomfortable spot where he feels like he has to go two hat hydra. And it just doesn't work, does it? Look. It just doesn't work. And that is how you play PvZ. Any questions? They're beefy as hell. And he doesn't... After he's built all of those links early game, and you turn around and say, okay, now it's time for you to build some hydras, you're like, wait, shit, when, when do I get time to drone? When do, how am I going to afford 
the upgrade for these hydras. There's 300 300 to get them upgraded. How am I going to do that when I spent all this time fucking around with uh, Link trying to defend a speed up rush that didn't even show up? Okay, PVT Vermeer. Per the rules of the stream, we will be going to gate this game. We are teaching exactly one opener. The problem is, what I did last game is actually kind of technical. It's not really what you want to be doing in an F to S stream because it's like stuff like sending out the zealots, then uh, putting one of them in the uh, in the spot where they can't attack them, and then then sending all three back with no zealots building at home into a quick gas, and then back to zealots. It's uh, probably not the right build to be showing. Also, jump. I still have to get S rank while going to gate PVT, so a lot of this is going to depend on uh, which <laughs> uh, matchups I get. It is going to be a lot more tricky to get S rank if I uh, keep running into Terrans. We're going for a one thirty-eight on the second gateway. Oh, that would do it. We only need like five more uh, games and we're going to be there. I could have this done uh, by 2 a.m. And then I'll be done for the uh, month on StarCraft. No more need to play any. PVT on Silphid. <laughs> this is worst case scenario for my uh, two gate rule. And the worst spawn on Silphid. I hate the spawn so much. I cannot get good mining on it. I just can't seem to line up the probes. I have not. He's still only free. That probe can be boosted on that crystal, so I'm boosting it. So these ones here, you've got to try and make them mine straight, but they don't really want to. It's a bit of a bitch. So you have to get the angle just right, and I don't really know what the angle that you want is. Let's hope he doesn't first scout me. One fifteen gate. It's not good, but one fifteen gate for ten for the twelve o'clock on Silford is. I'm not unhappy with that. This base site is so bad that a one fifteen is basically uh, a one thirteen on any other spawn. One thirty nine on the second gate.
Maybe I won't get first scouted. Then we're going to take a gas. If you use G-click on the sim on the simulator as it's building, it will allow you to uh, send workers without them getting stuck, which is always nice. Okay, I think I can trap a vulture here. Okay, so we stopped building marines. He built more marines than he really would have liked to as well. Interesting. That's a good play. The fact that uh, he had an eBay at my natural made me think that it probably wasn't like a quick second factory or something like that, because I don't think he would have had the money. It's one of the reasons why I was feeling okay to take a uh, quick free base, because I felt like it was almost certain this is what he would be doing, which is exactly what he is doing. Just a uh, very, very defensive uh, play. One fact, yep. And his problem now is that I've actually already been greedier than uh, he was expecting. I'm already, I've already got what I want. Whereas he's gone factory, army, factory. And Siege, so he has got really nothing that I'm worried about. 
Oh, that is not a good uh, thing to ha have happen. I did not want to lose an observer there. The fact that I had to replace that observer too is uh, expensive. It's messing with my timings on my uh, tech. Ah, you silly dragoon. Oh shit. That was very effective harasser. Fortunately my pro production's been pretty solid, so I have more, but I would have preferred not to have lost all my probes just now. We need some gateways now. And one of those. I actually have nothing outside his base to look for any kind of aggression. I could have sworn I built more arbiters. One arbiter is not going to be enough. Let's 
the start of our upgrades. We've got a good economy. Only on, uh, he must be about to get some more upgrades. He can't be just that far behind. It wouldn't make any sense. There really should have been a mine there, buddy. You can't just let me take those. If you let me just start taking bases, I'm going to take all of them. I need to get rid of some supply. My army was too low tech. I need to pick up some uh, high templar, some carriers. Oh, oh, that is critical damage. Okay, now we're in counterattack mode. I could not afford to eat uh, that. Uh, He's just going to let me mine this, is he? Well, that's fun.
he's playing this pretty fucking passive. He's like he's trying to go for a map split, but he's doing it very slowly. To the point that I'm gonna have a bunch of these with double upgrades by the time that he feels ready to do anything. I don't even know if they're going to carry us. No, he doesn't. He's not mining that gas either. Where are the rest of my carriers? Should be loaded in building. Where are my other carriers? I had carriers over here too. Here they are. There's an arbiter there, nice. Oh, you're out of position. I 
Maybe they should spend some of this money. Oh, I can stasis him. I can build a DT. And then I can just kill his detection. That's always fun when you do that. Oh, he's got wraiths. Well, shit. Uh, he doesn't have a comsat, so, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about the situation. But, you know, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Terrible split. Having that EMP hit all my arbiters when it did was very, very not ideal. If at all possible, you should avoid having your, all of your uh, spellcasters knocked out at the same time by a single opposing spell. Fortunately, I had a lot of money and a lot of bases. He could have knocked out uh, 3 o'clock at any time. I don't know why he didn't. He just let me finish mining those until they were completely... Uh, uh. One fourteen gate, not great, not terrible. So, Jumper, I'm not doing my versions of the Bonif 2 gate this uh 
these games because I don't want to make it too technical for anybody who actually watches this to learn. So I'm just doing 10, 12 and then like a 16 pylon. Interesting. He seems to be trying pretty hard to not let me scout. But in doing so, he's not scouting himself. Very nice. Three pylons, but I didn't see what was down here. It could actually be a citadel. So I killed his scout probe and I killed two probes there. I think actually I killed more than two probes. I'm not unhappy with the situation. I just wish I had a ramp. This would be so much easier with a ramp. What I'm doing isn't a true bond of two gate either, because I built the extra zealot. My pro production has been pretty non stop. So I've got that going for me. Was GT. And that's okay. Thank you. 
Killing that foe will actually slow him quite a lot. That was definitely worth it to kill that foe. I mean, this one's basically done, honestly. Just gonna go a bunch of gateways and then end it. There's nothing you can do about it. Gonna cut phobes. I just want to go on to the next game, it's getting late. Yeah, that will happen with the two-gate uh, jumper. 